Let's continue with a couple of problems on factoring by grouping. So as before, uh, you want to start by thinking of GCF. And once you've found that there's no GCF, or once you've factored the GCF out, you want to look at how many terms we have. In this problem, or in these problems, we have four terms. So these are traditionally solved by grouping. And the way we do that is by grouping, hence the name of the technique, the first two terms together, and then the last two terms together. We first find the GCF of the first two terms and we factor it out. So I'm going to say this once and then I'll say it again towards the end of the problem. Grouping is really just finding the GCF twice. That's all it is. It's just finding the GCF twice. So keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this example. So first we're creating groups. This is one group and this is the other group. We factor the GCF of these two terms first. So here we have z cubed and here we have 5z squared. There's no coefficient here that I can factor out along with the 5. So we move on to the variables. The GCF between z squared and z to the third would just be z squared. Once we write down the GCF, we open parentheses. And how do we know what goes inside? We divide each term by the GCF. So if we divide z cubed by z squared, we get z on the inside. If we divide 5z squared by z squared, we're left with just 5. That's it. Now here, you have two terms again. Now you can factor out either a 4 or a negative 4. And here's where you want to pause so that you don't make mistakes. In order to be able to find another GCF, remember I said that G grouping is just finding GCF twice. In order to find another GCF, I have to have a common factor. So if we factor out a plus 4, or just 4, when we divide negative 4z by 4, this will be negative z. Negative z is not the same as z. I will not have a common factor here. Now instead, if we factor out a negative 4, if we think about this for 5 seconds, the problem will tell us exactly what we need to factor out. We need to factor out something so that the inside, or what's left inside, is z plus 5. So if we factor out a negative 4 instead, negative 4z divided by negative 4 is just positive z. Negative 20 divided by negative 4 is positive 5. And lo and behold, we have a, a GCF again. Now, this is exactly the same exact position we were in with these problems, uh, these ones, where we had a GCF with two separate terms. We're exactly in the same spot. Between this big term, z squared times z plus 5, and negative 4 times z plus 5, we have a GCF of z plus 5. That appears in both. So I can factor it out, again, taking care that the GCF is written first. Once we write down the GCF, how do we know what goes inside? We divide the first term by z plus 5, and we'll be left with z squared. So that goes there. We divide the second term by z plus 5. We're left over with negative 4. That goes there. Now, if you stopped here, you'd be making a mistake because z squared minus 4 can be factored further. This is a difference of squares, which yields z plus 2 times z minus 2. So truly, the factors of this expression are z plus 5 times z plus 2 times z minus 2. Similarly, we have z cubed minus 5z squared minus 9z plus 45. There is no GCF. We have four terms, so we think of grouping first. Between these two terms, we can try to factor out a z squared, so that's exactly what we did. And then we're left over z cubed divided by z squared is going to be a z. Negative 5z squared divided by z squared will be negative 5. Now here, we want to think again. We can factor out a 9 or a negative 9. But if we factor out a 9, on the inside, we're going to be left over with negative z here. But that's not the same as this. And in order to do uh, factoring by GCF twice, we have to have the same common factor appear inside. So if we factor out a negative 9 instead, that goes there. Negative 9z divided by negative 9 is z. 45 divided by negative 9 is negative 5. Now at this stage, we see that there's a z minus 5 common to both these terms. We can factor that out. GCF always goes first. 
open parentheses. If we divide this term by z minus 5, we'll be left over with z squared, so that goes there. If we divide this term by z minus 5, we'll be left over with minus 9, that goes there. And again, you want to pause here and think to yourself, can this be factored further? If yes, you're obligated to continue. This again, just like before, is the difference of squares. We can factor that into z plus 3 times z minus 3. At this point, pause the video, make sure that you can do these star problems yourself, and then come back and compare to see if these answers are indeed correct, or if there was a common mistake made, identify the mistake, make note of it so that we can talk about it in class. Let's look at maybe one more example. So 4.1 says factor polynomials in quadratic form. So in quadratic form is sort of like these polynomials are going to be wearing a costume. They're quadratics on the inside, but on the outside, they will not look like quadratics. However, the task is always going to be, can you convert it to a quadratic, factor it, and then convert it back to where it was? So here we have 2x to the fourth minus x squared minus 15. We'll notice that this is not a quadratic polynomial because quadratic means the degree has to be two. This is actually quartic. They sound similar, they're not. Quadratic means degree two. Quartic means degree four. Now, what we can do is whenever we observe that the power of this middle term is half the power of this term or vice versa, if the power of the first term is twice the power of this middle term, this is probably a problem that's really a quadratic that's just wearing different clothing. So pick a favorite letter. I, I chose U. There's nothing special about U. You can use PQR, ST, uh, ABCD. Whatever letter you want, you can use here. This is just me doing a substitution. So I'm saying if I let U equal to X squared, well, what would happen if I square both sides? So if I square the left-hand side, I'm just going to get u squared. But if I square the right-hand side, x squared times x squared, well, that's going to give me an x to the fourth. What this allows us to do is it allows us to rewrite the problem using u's that might be easier to factor. So 2x to the fourth, well, wherever I have an x to the fourth, I can replace it with u squared. So that goes there. Minus x squared, well, x squared was u, so minus u. And then the 15 didn't have any x squares in it, so the minus 15 just comes along for the right. Now at this stage, pause the video. Make sure that you're able to go from here to these factors independently. I used uh, splitting the middle. You can also do a guess and check, but make sure that you pause the video at this stage. Make sure you're able to go from here to here independently. Now, once you factored this, u can get replaced with x squared. So that's a back substitution. If we start with x's, we have to end with x's as well. u was uh, replacing x squared. So now wherever u is, we put x squared back. So there's a u here. We replace it with x squared. Plus 5 stays as it is. Another u, this goes back to x squared as well. Minus 3, minus 3. Pause the video, convince yourself why this problem is over at this stage. Why is it that this cannot be factored? Why is it that this cannot be factored? So these are very good questions for hint, hint, cough, cough tests. Uh, I could give you the solution, ask you, are there any mistakes here? You would say no, because this is solved correctly. And then I could ask you a follow-up part B question and say, why is this that this problem is over? Why can this not be factored further? Or if it could be factored further, what would the factors be?